Greetings. My name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon in San Antonio, and I've been interested to notice how many of my patients expect to suffer after their bariatric operation. And when I say suffer, they're usually expecting to suffer in terms of the food process, whether it's pain or nausea or deprivation or something similar. I don't think patients have to suffer in order to have success. In fact, I think the best way to get to success is to not suffer at all. Put in work? Yes. Now we're going to unpack this a little bit. This idea of suffering or the need for suffering or the expectation of suffering, I think it comes from several themes. One of these is the Protestant ethic. And the Protestant ethic is a theme in Western culture that says that uh, one must do work in order to have success, which I believe in. Uh, but it's often taken to the next level or oversimplified to say no pain, no gain. And so uh, like in the gym, people expect to have pain and suffering in order to have growth uh, or success. I think there's also kind of a, a judgment or a prejudice aspect to this expectation for suffering and, um, and that comes from the unfortunate existence in our society of prejudice against obese people. So there's a sense that even sinks into the patients themselves that patients feel like they have to kind of pay back in some way for the wrongs that they've done to get themselves to this point. I do not believe in that either as I've posted extensively elsewhere. Um, I think the third theme is that, or the third source of this expectation for suffering is that trying to lose weight without the help of bariatric surgery, you know, just the diet and exercise and lifestyle change alone, um, is kind of suffering and deprivation. And so uh, that's, it's hard for people to imagine that things can feel natural after the surgery and to have long-term success. And just to be absolutely clear, I definitely think that it takes work and conscious effort to have health and weight loss success after bariatric surgery. In fact, one of the things that pisses me off is when my patients are accused of taking the easy way out after surgery. But deprivation, nausea, pain, I think there's a better way. First on the deprivation piece, um, one thing that I posted extensively elsewhere is that the bariatric operation, this is true of sleeve and gastric bypass, will actually change the energy hormones and the hunger level in such a way that patients feel less hunger. They go from a hunger that's not healthy and is, is way above what's appropriate uh, down to a level that is appropriate for sustenance and appropriate for energy. So the deprivation piece is taken care of by the surgery. The pain and the nausea piece are the thing that I think patients are actually most worried about. So let's focus in on that. And it's true that in the first couple of months after the surgery, the little stomach pouch, again, gastric bypass and sleeve, the same, the little stomach pouch is kind of stiff or resistant and it's easy to overfill it. And so uh, it's quite possible to uh, eat a bit too much, you know, maybe one bite too many and have pain or nausea or pressure and throwing up and that is suffering. And when I say there's a better way, I think the better way is to be very gentle with your little stomach and to eat tiny little bits and to eat in an experimental way of relearning how to eat and training your stomach how to eat with the smallest possible food intake that you need to take care of your hunger. That's the way, and in fact, the most successful patients who tiptoe back into eating and don't rush back into eating and, are, and pay attention to their eating, those are the patients that feel the best and have the best long-term weight control. Let me break this down into a couple of practical steps to help you actually achieve this goal of the least pain, the least nausea, and the best long-term success. I like to teach my patients immediately after surgery to treat their new little stomach like a tiny funnel. And if you use your imagination, you'll know that only thin fluids can go through this tiny funnel and even the thin fluids may overflow that tiny little funnel. And it acts like a tiny little funnel because it's stiff and resistant, which is natural right after the operation in the first week or two. And then we're going to teach our patients that it's gradually okay to move into solid food. In our practice, that's about 8 to 10 days after surgery. And that's as the healing is happening and this tiny funnel stomach is opening up or relaxing just a little bit. But still, this is the other theme. I want you to follow the hunger level and never force food or never overdo food. And then when you do feel hungry and you do try a little bit of food, I'm going to ask you to test out very small amounts of food, silly small amounts of food like six beans or one third of an egg or one quarter of a cheese slice would be good places to start. Now I want you to follow the guidelines of your surgical team. Many surgical teams have protein requirements and they'll have ways for you to meet those requirements I think without stressing or damaging your little stomach pouch. But for me, it's going to be about gentle kind of tiptoe into eating. Okay. Now there's a different circumstance we need to discuss.
Sometimes the little stomach pouch does not heal well and the little stomach pouch does not accept fluids or food as we expect. And so if you happen to be a patient who is doing their best and paying attention and has have recurring episodes of nausea or pain or throwing up, you need to be in contact with your surgical team because what I've been discussing so far is the routine course of events and the routine recovery, uh, but not everybody gets that. For us, it's three or five percent of the time that things will go a little bit off track and we need to change plans. Okay, so once again, I do not expect my patients to have sustained pain or nausea after their bariatric operation. If they have occasional pain or nausea and they can figure out what they did, correct it going forward, that's fine. That's a learning experience. If you're a patient who's having sustained nausea or vomiting after surgery, you need to be in contact with your surgical team. But the good news is that most patients, if they take care of their little stomach pouch and keep it healthy and happy, then it's going to take care of you. With the help of your healthy, happy little stomach pouch by being gentle and being conscious, you can be in control of food instead of food being in control of you. I hope this is useful information for your journey.